Welcome, everyone. I'm thrilled to have you joining us. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Deborah Eckerling, author of the award-winning Your Goal Guide, a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals, and creator of the Dev Method, which is my system for goal setting simplified. Every Sunday night, I lead the Goal Chat Twitter chat, and then on Monday, I bring in friends to dive deep into the topic. And then Thursday, it magically becomes an episode of the Dev Show podcast. So whether you are listening or watching or live or the replay, we are thrilled you're here in choosing yourself and to move forward on your goals. Wait, that was, oh no, that is this month. <laughs> so we do New Year, New You in January and February 1st start. So what else will we do in March, but March forward? So it's time for progress. And aren't we just tired of standing one place for the last, two years, <laughs> two months, two years. It's time to get energized. And I have great guests today. Uh, I have Sarah Monroe and Sarah and I met because I was a guest on Social Chatter. And it's always fun to turn the tables and ask the questions. So Sarah, really happy to have you here. Thanks I for also, having me. I also have Lisa Reed. And I love this story. People say, how do you know Lisa? Well, people told me I should meet Lisa and people told Lisa she should meet me. And here we are. And she is like the speaker, I don't know, speaker whisperer, because that would imply a lack of loudness, but definitely at one with finding speaker soulmates and sharing that wonderful message. So thrilled to have you here. And Lou Sabag, good friend. I don't think I've seen you for about a year since the last time you were on. So looking forward to checking in because I know you've got some wonderful, exciting projects. And I would just love for you all to introduce yourselves. I'd say better, but basically all I said was you're awesome. So uh, Sarah, let's start with you. Please share who you are, why you're here, and why you're so excited to march forward. Oh, absolutely. This is coming at perfect timing because I am setting new goals for the spring and starting some new projects. So I'm really marching forward. So I'm I'm looking forward to your bits of wisdom. I'm, I'm a communications consultant. I help nonprofits and small businesses tell their story online, whether that's social media, newsletter, web, PR, even those old fashioned events when we get together, because I am planning those for 2022, believe it or not. Um, we're gonna start up again in May. Um, and I'm also the co-host of Social Chatter, which is how we met. And a little, a little secret of mine is that I actually worked in organizational development and leadership development. I'd like to say like my second career. And I always love talking about strategy and goal setting. So thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, I'm excited because this is, it's the way of the world. Virtual mm -hmm. events aren't going away, but people are slowly dipping their toe into seeing real people in person again. Little scary, a lot exciting. We'll see what happens with it. Yeah. I think it was about this time last year when one of my themes was reconnecting and getting out there. And then Delta happened. So here's fingers crossed that we can keep that, that forward yeah. momentum going. And I did not know that about your past, but makes you even more yeah. appropriate to join us today. Exactly. So welcome, welcome. Lisa, your turn. Hello, I'm Lisa Reed, founder of Get Speaking Gigs Now, and I absolutely love working with entrepreneurs and business professionals who feel that calling to share their message and feel called to really teach and use speaking as a way to grow their business and attract their ideal clients that they absolutely love to work with. So a lot of my a lot of my clients are coaches, business coaches, consultants. And I sometimes people say, well, what do you mean like you help them get speaking gigs? I am a teach you how to fish kind of a gal versus a feed you a fish kind of a gal. And when I first started my first year in speaking, I booked 83 speaking engagements in my local area. And so, and, and this was before I knew what I was doing. I just, ignorance on fire. And so now I'm not ignorance on fire anymore, <laughs> but I try to uh, pass along all those tips and strategies and to my clients so that they can be booked on stages, on the right stages to attract their ideal clients, like no matter where they are, no matter what their topic is, and really get 
more of that life that they really want to have. So well, it's a little bit about me. Yeah. That's wonderful. And speaking, it's so important because when you have that message to share, it's almost like, I don't want to say your duty because then it sounds like it's a job, but when you love what you do, why wouldn't you want to spread the information? And I love the whole teach you how to fish because that's really my approach with gold. You know, I don't have your answers, but I do know how to pull those out of you because we all know we all have this thing that drives us that excites us but sometimes we forget and we kind of put it on the side and that's no fun for anyone so really thrilled to have you here and excited to to get more of your gems myself and of course to share with our people lou patiently waiting yep, yep. to be introduced good to see you yeah good to be back thanks for inviting me so tell people, and you've got an exciting new project too. Well, you always have exciting projects, but go, the hawk, share, please. All right. Well, hi, everybody. Um, good to be here. I'm Lou Sabag, and uh, essentially I'm a digital marketer. I have a boutique digital agency called Publish Today Media, and I've had this business for a good dozen years or so, but it was more of a consulting business, but just riding the uh, pandemic wave, I got what I would call another fresh start, which uh, I love fresh starts. And so it just hits you at the right time and you know you know you can run with it. So I launched uh, Publish Today Media more fully as a digital agency, um, basically last year, 2021. Uh, and it was a great adventure, it worked. So I'm happy to report, you know, it's been a great year and 2022 is looking good. I do a mix of, um, Digital, digital marketing strategy, I help figure out what channels, how much you should spend, you know, where you should invest, how it should deploy. Um, and then we'll work from omni-channel advertising. I really don't care what channel you're on, Google, Facebook, programmatic, it doesn't matter. It's as much of whether it works and produces. And from there, I go into um, the marketing automation side, integrate CRMs, because we go find all this data we make something happen in terms of a lead. So now we put it into the CRM and you know do all the touching down the road so that we can find this person and help you get found online. Um, I do a lot of surveying and quiz technology also. Uh, we call them interactive mobile experiences and just simple, cool quizzes that'll show up online that help you gather data, you know, the key data that you need as a business to uh, figure out what to say next. So those are kind of like the core of what we do. I'll build a website and do search engine optimization as needed. Um, I really like to help call it the main street entrepreneur. That's my favorite type of business person. I've worked for big companies. I've worked for a public company. It's the main street entrepreneur that's you know working 24 seven, 365 days a year, keeping the town going and all that. Um, so I help them with you know Madison Avenue level advertising and white glove service. I kind of grew up doing that throughout my career. And uh, hopefully we bring you some solid success online. So we have the talking, the analytics, and the communications. So we've got like, and the goals. So between the four of us, we've got like everything, everything covered. Uh, what, and I love that what you said, Lou, is that you said last year was like awesome for you which is great because a lot of people, they had really good years, really bad years. Most people were right in the middle, but what do you think um, made what you do so valuable, so important during this time where everybody's trying to find their footing yeah. over and over and over again? Well, digital became front and center. All the event stuff we would do and going out and meeting people stopped dead in its tracks. So digital took a whole new, you know, perspective and you had to figure it out. Uh, it was also putting, connecting all the dots, I call it, from the prior two agencies I was at, a public company and a big national agency. Um, you know, they did some interesting stuff, but there were places where it didn't connect and that's where I saw the opportunity. So this time through, it's all the pieces came together. And the other part, you know, it's like, some of the other companies couldn't fix problems, couldn't say they're sorry. You know, it's like, so now I don't have those issues. I can take care of it the way I always have and make sure you're delivering, you know, appropriately and calling them back. And that's just part of how we've always operated. You know, it's to drive me crazy when they, you know, the, the big company couldn't do that. You know, it's, it's unbelievable. 
you know, you're, every now and then your East Coast does show. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty well, we got. I'm in Maine. We got one Vermont, right? And then two, and West, two West, West, West Coasters. I second hometown is Maine, too. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't even plan yeah. that. I just thought it would be good to chat together. <laughs> Amazing. So, Sarah, what over the last year, what worked for you? What um, and, and I could say the last year, the last two years, what were your big ahas that you're taking moving forward? Oh, that's a tricky question um, because I um, I think one of the big ahas was that I appreciate having a team around me so that these short-term projects that I was doing as a consultant, things that were just one-offs, didn't um didn't really work for me and while i love working with people who are in the startup mode um as far as my long-term clients and and what i want to do as the core of my business um realize that it really is a long-term relationship that i want to have with with folks so that i can get into the strategy so it's not just a coaching session or a little training session it is um, it is that longer term piece of their whole corporate communications, how different tools can work to achieve their business goals, reach the right audiences, you know, all that great stuff that we do in marketing. Um, but to really look at where the organization or business is going and how to use use the resources around them and the people around them to really succeed. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I love working with people <laughs> who are just getting started and doing those small projects. So I think that I learned that keeps me energized and keeps me fresh with the, with the new things. Um, I also learned that I'm okay with live streaming. It was almost a year ago that I was invited to be a guest on Social Chatter and it worked out that um, they needed a co-host, and um, we've had a great time doing it and looking forward to doing it even longer. Um, I also had the aha on my business side that the business name and focus really wasn't working out. And um, I am literally moments away, I shouldn't say moments away, probably a couple of weeks away from launch, launching new website, new business name, new identity, all that kind of stuff with all of the pieces that I felt like I was too busy to really put together um, when I first started consulting about six years ago. So putting together things like my own corporate values, even though I'm a solopreneur, I can have a corporate culture and can talk to my clients about how I work and what those expectations are um as far as our working relationship and um talk a little bit about my how i see my business as having corporate social responsibility and and what i do um what i teach the folks who come to me for training or coaching and um just how i do business so uh it's been a real reset you know we all talk about those resets we talk about that pivot word, but um, I like to say it was a pirouette. So a little more graceful, um, a little more of a new direction, um, and it's really exciting. I think that's probably going to be the subhead <laughs> for when it comes up as a as a podcast. Reset, pivot, yeah. or pirouette. Even yeah. though I think I spelled it wrong in the chat, but no one needs to know this. I forget I said it. <laughs> But I like, well, I like the ideas of everything. It's taking, first of all, you know, I'm all about the foundation. So DEB stands for determine your mission, explore your options, brainstorm your path. When you know the foundations of what it is that you do that you love, that you have mm -hmm. to offer the world, then you can build from there. And I love how both of you have taken what you like and don't like from previous experiences, because I think that's how we build. It's, you want to create a blog, see what other people do, see what you like, do less of that, see, uh, wait, see what you like, do more of that, and do mm -hmm. less of what 
bugs you out there. And it's the same way in terms of interacting with customers, building your business, creating things that you put out on into the world. Uh, it appears that, that Lisa disappeared. So hopefully she will come back to us. I, I'd love to go back to something that you said in your intro, Lou, is talking about the power of quizzes and uh, surveys, which, by the way, I love. I did my first LinkedIn survey. Oh, Lisa's back. Oh, good. Uh, I did my first LinkedIn survey yesterday just for fun, for information for an upcoming project. And I cannot believe, I mean, I could believe, I was very excited about it, but it's amazing what happens when you ask people questions that really get to their core. So what, what is it about surveys? And then Lisa, we're gonna jump back to you. Um, Lou, what is it about surveys that really get people going um, for business and life? It's a bit, they entertain people with them, educate them with them. Um, done right, they're cool and they're, they'll engage you. Uh, and one of the big differences I find with surveys is when somebody really doesn't know who you are, they're, they're less likely to engage. But if they've joined your email list or started to see you online, all of a sudden they know who you are and that opens up the engagement door on a quiz. And you can do any number of varieties, run them into all your social channels. They can reside on your website. So it's a data gathering tool. That, that's the big thing that's happening today with all the privacy laws and where data is going. You know, how do you capture, they call it first party data. You got to capture that somehow. So it's yours. And that's probably one of the most important things going on there in the digital marketing side that no one's really paying much attention to. So the quiz is that gateway, you know, and it can be a product finder or a personality quiz. There's any number of ways to do them, but entertaining somebody is probably a good way to think of it. You know, ask them three fun questions and feed that into your CRM. And then you ask them the next three questions back, you know, be it a week later. And that just fuels the process. They'll tell you what they want if you're listening. Ooh, I like that. Uh, and what are your thoughts on this, Sarah? I, I love that people will tell you. You just have to mm -hmm. ask. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, it's funny. I have a, a long history in the nonprofit sector and um, we call them assessments in the nonprofit sector. We ask people things all the time. Um, so I always have to chuckle when there are times where the business community, like, like on LinkedIn, it's like, oh, let's try surveys. And I'm sure Lou, too, you know, market research, we've done these things forever, right? Focus groups and, and all of that. So um, yes, absolutely. I like um, just taking what Lou started to say and and adding on to that. If there's a way, if you have a core audience, if you have a core customer group, client base, whatever it is, you have one of those whiz bang CRMs, right? Where you can really track people. If you can slowly over time, keep track of their answers. So it's not just anonymized, data that is actually things that are contributing to your relationship with them. And you can ask them to keep adding to their profile a little bit. Um, I'm working with a group right now. We're trying to track women-owned businesses. Um, I've done this with kids in STEM programs where we have kind of tracked the different programs that they've gone through, what are their interests. So each time they do that little survey, it goes back into their CRM record so that we know, okay, let's let's make sure that that Alana knows that there's something happening with the engineers this week because that's what she's really interested in, or um, you know the the retail businesses that we're working with that they know that we have a speaker who's going to talk about credit card processors or something like that, and we can then tailor the surveys to them as well, right? because different customer segments don't always have the same needs as others. So continually checking in with them and asking them what they need instead of assuming what they need, I think is really important when it comes to anything, really. Right, well, and if we're talking progress and building a business, you can't build a business without an audience or without customers. Mm -hmm. So very important right. to kind of keep your pulse on and who's in your network, who is in this kind of tribe. 
Lisa, do you have any thoughts on surveys, talking to your people, getting the information out of wherever and using it? Well, I, it? yeah, it's so neat being with, on a panel, especially when your internet goes out, because then it's not all on me. <laughs> Thank you for all holding, holding the ground. I work with more solo entrepreneurs. And so for them, oftentimes a CRM is, uh, what is that called, you know? And mm -hmm. so a lot of times I'm helping them just navigate even the concept of having a CRM. What would you use it for? Just the bare minimum of like how to, how to go from having everything on a post-it or an Excel spreadsheet and getting used to prospecting and tracking and things like that. So I love hearing the the data and the analysis but i'm i'm on the beginning side of that for people usually or they're not needing to track that many details but certainly i am a fan of doing something once instead of going back and doing it over and over again so one of the tips i'll share like say if somebody's starting to create their ideal speaking gig pipeline i'm like okay create a list of 20 and yes initially you could put it on a piece of paper you could put it on Excel spreadsheet or Word or whatever, but that's not what's going to keep you booked, right? You need to be able to track it. And to Sarah's point, it's like, I'll say, if you're going to go in there and get the information or you're going to have your assistant get it, the information, get the name, the phone number, the email, the website, the when do they meet, as much data as you can so that you don't have to go back and get it again. And a lot of times people don't think all those things through. They're like, I'll just get the website. And I'm like, but if you didn't get the name, then you're gonna have to go back to the website. Then you're gonna have to go back and you're gonna have to go, mm -hmm. you know, and so, and then where are you housing that? If it's on a post-it, that's not gonna, <laughs> that's not gonna cut the mustard, you know? And if you called them one time, you need to remind yourself to reach back out. So I'm, I'm more on that beginner side of like teaching someone how to actually use a CRM and how would they build their business. Mm -hmm. And the and, more information you have is better because you don't know yeah. when you're going to need it. Well, I'm putting notes in, like I had a client uh, who I was helping with her talk today. I help people create signature talks. So I had notes <coughs> of our last uh, meeting so that we could reference that. And a lot of times, again, a newer entrepreneur, someone newer in business, or someone who's maybe never been in sales, you could have been in business, but in sales, it's great training for CRM and tracking all that, right? Like, oh, it's your, you know, dog's birthday's coming up. Great. You know, <laughs> whatever it is that you need to know about that person, have that at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Take awesome. all the notes, lots and lots of notes. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, I love my notebook. Everything I do starts as a draft on one of these. And then for, uh, I do have a CRM but I still love my Excel because for me, you know, it, I think the point of having a system is one that works for you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if that's what works for you, keeping everything lined up and you have like A through triple Z, but as long as you're keeping the information and you know where to find it, cause it's all in one place. So for those of you who are panicking, oh my goodness, don't panic, figure out what's going to work for you a way that you will work it. And I also, then, yeah. I also um, believe in that, I guess this is my second fish metaphor today, even though I don't fish, uh, the koi pond method where the bigger the koi pond, the bigger the koi fish, right? So mm -hmm. I like to train my clients to think you could manage on a piece of paper or post or whatever, you know, for a certain, <laughs> certain amount of time, but I want you to be thinking bigger, kind of what Sarah and Lou are saying, like, what if you were building an empire? What if you're building this huge company and you're, you know, mm -hmm. you have, like if you have to think bigger than what you personally can manage, you could still start with a small, like free or low cost CRM, but I'm a big fan. I like this. Right. Act like you're building an empire because in essence, aren't you building an empire? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Lou, let's talk about your empire. You have this new launch. What is the most exciting part of it for you? Um, I guess just bring building the customer base out. Uh, that's really where I've got to get it to. Uh, we have a couple major clients now, and it's that the exciting part is adding the next one and the one after that. 
Uh, I'm not sure where I'll scale it to quite yet, but again, I wasn't thinking I would be launching a new agency two years ago that wasn't on the radar and all of a sudden there it was. Um, so I, I think it's the the growth part and acquiring the next client is a natural part of that that I don't so much think about doing, but staying in the mode to always be doing it. You know, it's all the goal setting stuff. One of the things that carried me through was the network. And I never stopped talking to people at all through that whole stretch. I almost kind of knew where it was going to go, you know, as the, the, the plan went. And then who knew, who, no one knew where the pandemic was going to take us, but it was just keep doing what you were doing. And that paid off. Awesome. Uh, just keep swimming, right? Just keep swimming. <laughs> yep. Keep your life preserver on. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So Sarah, what about you? What are, I know you're, you're going, our timing is really good for you. What is the most exciting part for you of what you are building now? I think part of it is um, that there's a future to it. I, I always said I've been in and out of consulting a little bit, owning my own business a little bit. Um, I, I joke that I went kicking and screaming into it <laughs> in 2016, but, um, but I really enjoyed it. And now I'm at a point where, okay, I can see where the future can be. I've now learned who I don't want to work with, how I don't want to work, right? And, um, and put the systems in place for expanding and growing in this next phase. Um, as Lou is talking, I was reminded, um, I, it's a little thing, I get Merriam-Webster's word of the day, right? And today's word was a verb, founder. So we all think of founders as the noun, right? We were founder of our businesses. But founder as a verb actually means to become submerged or to sink. So when we, the verb, when you flounder, it's actually supposed to be founder. Um, and I thought that was a, that was really interesting that, you know, just that little, the, the little change in grammar, um, I think a lot of founders can feel like they are sinking, um, but having, taking the time to pause and to really think about where you want to go and how you want to show up, um, like I said, how I want to show up in setting my values, my corporate values, my corporate culture. Um, I think it's really worthwhile and it makes me feel more energized because it's going to be easier to say no to some projects that come up. Um, it'll certainly be easier to say yes because I have defined what is going to work for me and how I want to show up for that client um, so that I'm a founder, a noun instead of a founder of verb. I love it. Uh, so, Lisa, you your computer difficulties kept you from answering this question, so you get both. Um, what was your biggest aha from last year, and what are you building now that you're really excited about? Hmm. Biggest aha from last year, I think, was really relishing the freedom of my time which may sound like a different answer than anybody else had. But I was, prior to the pandemic, I mean, I, I speak about the same amount of time as I did before the pandemic, about 60 times a year. But prior to the pandemic, I was driving everywhere. And once that stopped and I was able to speak virtually, and I was already coaching my clients virtually, but not having to drive around as much all of a sudden I had a lot more free time to create, to create content, to create a stronger infrastructure for my business, to create more value for my clients. Whereas before I just felt like I was running around all the time. So because that was, you a, were. yeah, because I was. <laughs> and so that was a really huge shift for me personally and professionally. I don't think I've ever, I've said lately, I've noticed this year, I'm like, gosh, I just, I feel like I have more free time than I ever had in my whole adult career life. Like I just do, I'm not commuting anywhere. And I live in a 
Orange County, California. There's a lot of traffic. So I'm just really loving that. I love working from home and I had never done that before full time like this. So I'm really enjoying that. What am I creating? What's the second part of the question? What am I excited what about? What are you creating now that you're excited about? Well, it's interesting. I'll let you all in on a little secret. I have, I'm in this fascinating spot of a lull, which is kind of like a really healthy functional lull where I launched a bunch of stuff. I launched two big projects at the beginning of this year in January. And one was my boot camp, get your talk ready to rock. And I put it on Thinkific. I don't know if you've talked about software yet, but I mean, that, that's a software that I use that I really like. And uh, launched that. And then I also launched a podcast that is a, not necessarily to do with my business, but something, a fun project called um, How I Met My BFF. And my best friend and I, from my childhood, best friend and I interview other female best friends and we celebrate the best friend relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super fun. And so back to the freedom of time, I've been able to think of pro like, what would I love to do that just doesn't have anything to do with business? Maybe it'll have something to do with business. Doesn't really matter if it has anything to do with business, just something that I would love to do. And that freedom of time allowed for those types of projects to come to light. And so we just launched February 2nd and so those are things I'm excited about, even though they, they've happened in the past recently. Uh, it counts. It totally yeah. counts. So in January, yeah. you uh, launched your course. Yep. In February, you launched your podcast. So yep. what's March? No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's, I'm really clear on all my goals. So it's just more of the same. Like what Lou said, being really consistent has always worked well for me do more of what I just normally do. And I'm, you know, I'm on summits. I booked for speaking engagements. I've got my client families all filled, you know, with, I have a speaker's training academy that's filled and constantly being refilled. So I'm, I'm, I'm really good. <laughs> it's, all, it's all sprinkles. It's all sprinkles at this point. It's time for a vacation. <laughs> I have to think of a vacation. <laughs> exactly. That's actually okay. a good point. We don't have a vacation on the books right now. We will go on one, but there's not one on the books. So I, I like think it. we have your March goal plan. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I want to let's dive a little bit deeper into the psyches of you all. Uh, this is just a fun question that I like to ask is what is a good anecdote that's very indicative of who you are? And the last time I asked this question, I got a lot of karaoke answers. Prior to going live, we were all talking about, no, there will be no singing. So I do not expect <laughs> any karaoke answers. Uh, so Lou, do you have a story to share? A good story just that speaks to me? Yeah, um, you, the you, hmm. the person. Um, I can't hmm. think of one yet, actually. Um, Something probably down an entrepreneurial path, I think, is where it's going to end up. Because I had gone to an entrepreneurial program um, right from the get-go. And I was like, uh, I didn't know what I would end up doing. But to the whole path of all the businesses we started and just ways we figured stuff out. So there's, there's, I'm trying to put the story together on what that was. But I knew I'd be on an entrepreneurial mission one way, shape, or form. You know, No doubt about it. And that's kind of how it's played out too. Looking back, um, I had to put a resume together for one of the agencies I was at. And it's like, oh yeah, we, I remember doing that and that and that, and all the little pieces of the puzzle that came together over the years. It's a good tip. If ever you feel like you're not where you want to be, look at your resume and say, oh my goodness, I did what? Always a nice reality check to, to revisit your history because we forget things. <laughs> So, yeah. okay, that counts. You passed. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah. Uh, well, hearing Lou talk uh, reminds me uh, and just, you know, where we are in life, right? Um, I used to have this hanging in my office. It's a quote from Alice in Wonderland, where Alice is asking the Cheshire cat for directions. And, um, and the cat asks, well, where do you want to go? And Alice's response is, I don't really know as long as I go somewhere. 
And the, the cat's answer is, is something to the effect, well, then any path will take you there. Um, and I think it's, uh, I mean, as a metaphor for my life, I have had many different careers. I started my professional life as a bench scientist. I was a molecular biologist. And then I worked in public policy and leadership development. And then I worked in fundraising and marketing. And now I work in a digital space. I work in a space that didn't exist when I was in college. So um, I think for me that any path, when you, when a path presents itself and it's an interesting opportunity and could lead to a new direction or new learning, it's something that I'm really game for. And um, will often take that path that may seem like a different a different turn or a wrong turn to some people, but for me, it's a great new adventure. Well, adventures are really good and they're healthy. And, and something that you mentioned before when you were talking about putting in the groundwork, because when mm -hmm. you have the groundwork, then you know what opportunities mm -hmm. are going to work for you. And you've interviewed me, so you know this. Um, that's why I like the mission and the motto so much. So if mm -hmm. you take the time to create a mission for yourself and like a short snappy motto it's a great barometer of what's going to take you in the right place as you're moving forward so i think that the story you shared is perfect of that and not to forget you can do things for fun too just because it's mm -hmm. not the motto if it benefits you in other ways it totally counts oh yeah i've learned email marketing as a volunteer I was um, in a women's group. I was in the Junior League of Champlain Valley. It's a women's charitable organization here. It's part of a an international um, network of women. And I learned how to use constant contact when the communications chair had to go on maternity leave early. And so I learned it over the course of my vacation <laughs> one year. And I've used it every year since. And it's a core part of my business. So you never know where things are going to come up. Wow. That's awesome. I learned, you remember Quark Express? Mm -hmm. I remember yeah. I was doing events for Barnes and Noble. And when I, when they brought me in, I was working at a different location. And then I transferred over <laughs> to do their events. And they said, Deb, you have to do the calendar. It's late. And I spent two days in Kinko's, the 90s learning Quirk Express to do <laughs> the newsletter. Sometimes trial by fire is like mm -hmm. the best way to learn. Yeah. And then you remember it. Mm -hmm. So Lisa, what is your story that you think is very uh, descriptive of who you are, what you stand for, etc.? Right. Well, I love both what you shared and I thought of different things as you were sharing. So thanks for going first. And one thing I would say is, especially as a speaker and being surrounded by other speakers, one thing in common that I hear a lot that I also experience is I will have a talk starting to formulate in my mind, like maybe in the middle of the night or while I'm driving somewhere, or it just starts. And, or if I'm seeing somebody speak, I can this was, you know, this has been since I was five years old, you know, really young, I'd be like, I could go up there and I could teach that. I could do that. Like, and that string or thread seems to go through m most speakers, whether you're scared or not, that's a different story. But there's this little like tapping, like you should be doing that. You have something to say. And I experience it. I still experience it when I have a new concept or something that I want to share. And it's like, it has to get out. And when I read Sarah Gilbert's book, Big Magic, I don't know if any of you have read that book. Um, anyone here? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. But she talks about, she, she wrote um, Eat, Pray, Love. And she talks about the concept of a having this book idea come and it's almost like an organism, a thing, a living entity, if you will. And as the creator, you can decide if you want to give it life, you know, like, or it'll just go to someone else, right? It's like, okay, you know, maybe this wasn't a right fit and it'll just pop over to someone else. And I, and I think that speaking is another way of, of that happening, that occurring when she, when I read that, I thought, oh, that's, that's how I feel about it. Like 
it's a gift that I'm able to like nurture it and, and, and give it life and give it to other people. And you ask, well, what am I all about? Like, what's, <laughs> what's my life purpose? Okay, Deborah, I'll share it on the, on the call here today. And that is really to elevate our human consciousness for the higher good of all of us. Right. And I think when other people share their gifts, just like we're doing today, then we're all giving back and we're all benefiting from that. So that's why I like working with speakers because then they have their gift to share and then that affects someone else and that affects someone else and on and on and on it goes and world peace, right? <laughs> Hopefully. I, I love the question you answered that I didn't ask. So I'm going to ask the other two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is your purpose? Lou? What is my purpose? Um, I guess to have a comfortable lifestyle, take care of everybody involved, um, be able to do more of what you want to do. That was one of the big changes over these past couple of years. Of, and I think to what everyone was saying, it's like you kind of said, I'm not going to do that again. Or you know what you don't want. <laughs> you may mm -hmm. still be working towards what you do, but some of the don't wants become real clear. So that's been the just changing the lifestyle around to have more fun, uh, have more flexibility. It's very nice to be back to being the lead entrepreneur and running the business versus working for somebody. And I started the public company side. I thought that would be a cool place and all buttoned up, but you know, there's as much chaos there as any place else. Um, and same to the national agency side. You know, just when you think everything's like the grass is greener somewhere else, it's like oh, maybe not. So um, tread carefully. That's great. So Sarah, what is your purpose? And boy, have you had a winding road. I've had a very winding road. <laughs> um, I think uh, part of my purpose is always learning, um, always seeking something new to learn and exploring that new adventure. Um, but I think it's also seeking understanding and um, something that I've really focused on, especially over the last two years, um, since Joy, George Floyd's murder, the Ahmaud Arbery trials, you know, really trying to seek the understanding of my place um, in this world and how I can make it better. Um, whether that's through my work, my volunteerism, as a family member, as a friend, um, that really is a common thread of my purpose. That's lovely. I like that. Anybody want to change your answers? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so what do you think keeps people stuck? I mean, because that's really what we started out with. You know, it's beginning of the year. Everybody's excited. By February, they're starting over again. And now it's March and either, well, in those who know me know that I start the new year in December to get people running start. So it's really two months of the year of ramp up and then, okay, you can do it. Come on, let's get going. Because for me, goal setting is year round as it is for likely you because you're constantly refreshing and, and moving forward. But what stops people and, and how do you light a fire under them when they need to progress? Lisa? Mm -hmm. Uh, I call that in my world, we talk about it in a metaphorically speaking, sp speaker's kryptonite is what I call it. And that in case anyone doesn't know, kryptonite is the one thing that can kill Superman. It's not real, but in our minds, it can certainly feel real. And so for speakers, and I think entrepreneurs and really anyone can relate to a lot of these things, it's thoughts in your mind that stop you that don't that are, you can never solve it. You can never prove it. You can, never, it's, it's just, it's just something that's keeping you safe, quote unquote. Like, um, it'll sound like, I'm not sure if, you know, it will work out. I'm not sure if anyone will want to hear what I have to say. I'm not sure if I should buy that thing. I'm not sure if blah, 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 blah. Right. Or I'll just wait and do a little more research. I'll just wait and do X, Y, Z. I'll just wait and those kind of things. Or what if they don't like what I say? What if they don't, you know, what if, what if, what if? So one of the things I like to do is let's get to the heart of it. What is your kryptonite? Because everyone's is different. We all get triggered by different things from different experiences that we had. 
and then really face it. I'm a big fan of like, open the closet, look at the monster in the face, you know, look under the bed. <laughs> Is it really that bad and scary? And what are we dealing with? And then we can go, okay, got it. I see that that's what I'm worried about or scared about. Is that true? What else is true? What else do I know about myself? And we can process through it. So then you can catch it quicker next time, overcome it quicker and move forward. So it's FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great monster yeah. metaphor because I totally see that. Like, okay, monster, what's your problem? Yes, <laughs> yes. That's fantastic. Sarah, what do you think stops people from progressing the way that they want to, should, need to, have to, whatever? Right. I think there's a few things. Um, tagging on to what Lisa said, there is that analysis paralysis. You can just keep thinking about it and putting together a system and tweaking your CRM and doing everything but the actual work, right? That you just think, I need one more piece of information. Um, but I've been reading... Um, I think Seth Godin wrote something earlier this week and Mel Robbins writes about, you know, all these, um, these uh, business authors. I've been trying to read different voices um, in the business author space or the motivation space. And what I love their idea of if something isn't, if you're stuck on something, it means that it's not working or you're not heading in the right direction. And sometimes we just think, oh, the project's too big. We need to break it down into, into smaller pieces so that it seems more manageable. And that's certainly a piece to it. But I think overall, if things aren't, if things are just a slog, then it should be a sign that this isn't heading in the right direction. Um, now, of course, we have to consider work is work, right? It's not always easy, it's not always fun. But I, I kind of think of, there was one project that I took on at the end of the year. It was for a returning client and they needed some help for about six weeks. And I said, yeah, sure, I can. I, uh, I'm happy to help. Love you guys. Love your mission. Um, it was uh, a website migration and just a slog of data, just tons and tons of reformatting pages. And I can do it. But I found myself really not motivated to do it at all and like putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Um, whenever I got my new assignment, I would just put it off until the last minute to finish it. And it was because it, it wasn't working for me. I have um, moved my business to a different place. I work in a different space. And, and while it was great to sort of brush up on my skills in WordPress, it's not where I want to go. And so that made the task enormously more difficult. Right, you have to know thyself mm -hmm. and know that sometimes there are things you just shouldn't be doing. And we don't like to use the word should, but I think it's appropriate now. So it means right. either break it down or move on. Very right. simple, which I love. Right. It's okay to say no. Right. It's OK to say no, because then you can say yes to something that is right for you. I love that phrase and I say it constantly. So I'm <laughs> thrilled that you said because you're sa when you say when you're saying no to something that's not a fit, you are saying mm -hmm. yes to yourself. You're gifting yourself the time, the energy mm -hmm. to do the things. Mm -hmm. So, Lou, what do you think? What stops people from progress? I think I would say from hearing what everyone was talking about, there's like a fear factor. It depends how you're stuck for one. Are you stuck in a job or a business or on a project? You know, there's a different levels of uh, degrees of difficulty, maybe we call it. Um, and I think there's a little bit of a fear factor. You're worried, you're scared. Uh, it might be picking up the phone to do something. But as we were mentioning all this, I was coming back to, for me now, it's like just doing the top three things every day. I do a list every day. What are the top three? Just do those. Because I'll have 50 things on a list usually on any given day. But did you crack off the top three? And then that's been the stuff that, again, that's made the difference for me. I love it. This is a great transition into the goal section of the conversation. And what I would love for you all, and whether you want to use this, Lou, or something else, I love that just do 
the top three things every day is a great goal, but perhaps you have something else that you want to gift our people to help them make progress and move forward. What do you think, Lou? Um, off of the top three, it's like, write it down. For me, write it down. Uh, it's got to get to paper or be somewhere. And, and I'll keep like a track of it, be it weekly, monthly, quarterly, and scratch it off when it's done. But writing it down is just, it gets it done. Absolutely. I got to edit though. Yes, I love my list. But if you check it off rather than scratch it off, then you've got a tracking on all the things you've done. So when you're like down on yourself for not progressing fast enough, you can look at your list and say, okay, I did these things. Yay me. So goal from Lou, do the top three things on your list every day, write it down. Boom. Good. Awesome. Lisa, what goal would you like to gift our audience? Well, I'm going to go out of left field over here. Please and do. because I think a lot of times this isn't discussed in goal setting and that's our feelings. I know you probably do that, Deborah, because you're so good at this. Um, but I think a lot of times we think of goals as like, this is what I have to do and literally have to do. And so I think, well, how would you like to feel not just today, but like in your life and what are you going for there? And then think of the things in, and this is a bigger perspective, like, what types of activities, especially if you're an entrepreneur, generate that kind of feeling? And when I was able to shift that, it made my yeses clearer, my noes clearer. Because for me, uh, usually an easy yes would be like speaking, facilitating, um, being a guest on a show, teaching, coaching. Like those five, I'm usually going to be a yes. Anything outside of those five, I'm going to need to think about it. That's because those things bring me joy. That's fantastic. So make the, the list of the things that make you feel good and do those things. Great and then goal. delegate the rest. I mean, you know, delegate the rest and <laughs> you still need if to you can. file your taxes. And, and sometimes <laughs> it's a matter of dessert first. So yeah. I had a bunch of things I had to do today, but I'm doing a new signature talk Friday. And I said, I get, I get to. I gifted myself the time to work on the presentation before I did the other things. Is the presentation done? No. Is it started? Yes. Good. So you get the happy, the happy feelings that drive you through the work and then you get back to the happy stuff. So like sandwich it. Beautiful. So Sarah, what about you? Yeah, what goal sure. do you have for our listeners and viewers? Well, I think I'm going to combine the two. Yes, <laughs> what, do. what Lisa and Lou said. Um, something that reminded what Lisa was talking about reminded me of um, a good friend of mine is an executive coach, um, and she talks about visualizing yourself. Like, if you have a goal to be more on time, then you say, "I am a person on time." You sort of visualize and own that space that I am a reliable person. I am a person who gets things done early. So that means that you also need to be a person who plans, right? And Lou had talked about the, the top three things. Well, I'm a big bullet journaler. Um, and so I sit down with my bullet journal on Friday afternoons and sort of look at what, what happened this week, what worked, what didn't, what was a roadblock, what needs to happen next week. Um, it's something I got into when I was working in sales was that I sort of gathered up everything that had happened for the week, kind of categorized what, what, what sale was in what stage of decision making and planned out what Monday and Tuesday at least were going to look like as far as who needed the follow up early in the week or who I needed to get things from early in the week so that I could then relax over the weekends. Um, and free my head up for other things that I wanted to do outside of work or to develop professionally or to volunteer or have fun. So Friday afternoons still um, are my planning afternoon. Um, and I have, um, I really try to protect that time so that I can have some, some free time on the weekends. Okay, so I'm making it into a goal. 
I love this, by the way. So mm -hmm. visualize yourself being successful at the tasks that you need to be better at. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's good because usually when you talk about visualization and when I talk about visualization, it's about the life you want, but doing the activities well that you need to create that, I love it, that's great. And then to choose a planning day once a week where you count your wins and you make your plans. Yeah. Right? We good? Yeah. I think counting yeah. your wins is, is hugely important, especially when you're building things, you need to count all the wins because you're on this journey. Celebrate yeah. everything. Even so, if that means adding things to the list? That may not have been on the list, but you did anyway, so you can check it off. Oh, always, <laughs> always add things on the list because you need to track them. It's not mm -hmm. cheating. It's being efficient. <laughs> this has been such a wonderful conversation. Where can people find you? Let's start with you, Sarah. Sure. You can find me across social media at Sarah Monroe VT. Um, if you'd like to connect me, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, drop a note that says that you saw me on Deb's show and I'd be happy to connect. Fantastic. And always write the note. It's a way of how always people you meet. Mm -hmm. It's not just because it's polite. It's a way to remember the way you've connected with people. Mm -hmm. Love that. Thank you, Sarah. Lou, where can people find you? Um, LinkedIn is probably my main, you know, business social channel. And if you look up Lou Sabag as, as you see it, um, I'll turn up. Um, and that's probably the best way. We did just launch a new website, publish to me, publish today media.com. So that's up and running and you can find us through that as well. Fantastic. And if you go to the devmethod.com slash blog, it will have the recap, the replay and the links mentioned. So wonderful. And congrats on the new site. Lisa, where can people find you? They can find me at getspeakinggigsnow.com. That's gigs with an S because, of course, you want more than one. So getspeakinggigsnow.com. And there's a little goodie there for you. If you are interested in speaking, you could get five top tips to get more speaking gigs. I am on LinkedIn. I'm easy to find, but my name is spelled different. So that's why I send you to the website <laughs> because my name is Funky Spelling. Okay. L-E-I-S-A Read for those of you who don't want to Google Get Speaking Gigs now. And you can find me, I'm at the Deb Method everywhere. You can go to the debmethod.com slash goals to learn how I can help you define, plan, and achieve your goals, whether you're a, an individual, an entrepreneur, a business, or organization. And if you need a little extra help, you can grab a copy of your goal guide on Amazon or your favorite place to buy books. So there you go. What a wonderful conversation and what a great way to kick off a new month. Before we wrap, I would love one final tip from each of you. Lou, final tip? Final tip, um, just go do it. Take a step. <laughs> Take a step. Love it. And Sarah, final tip. Um, it's one of my favorite hashtags that I use everywhere. Keep up and keep going. Keep up and keep going. That's great. And Lisa, what is your final tip? Done is better than perfect. Oh, I love that. Love That's one of my favorite. I, I think we're like twins. We're soul sisters or whatever. We're, yeah, we're, we're definitely we soul yet, sisters. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a true stop overthinking and start doing. Because we know you could do it. So now you know too, because we told you. Thank you again, Lisa Reed, Sarah Monroe, and Lou Savag for joining me to ring in the new month.